There's a vast marine ecosystem beneath these bluffs, but it's sick and dying. You see, for the past 100 years, the Palos Verdes Peninsula has lost 75% of its giant kelp forests. And without kelp, our oceans would die. It's absolutely crucial for marine life in our seas, providing food and shelter to over 700 species. But off the coast of Palos Verdes, miles of kelp forest have disappeared. Tom Ford wants to bring it back. It's like flying through the trees, except the fish are more numerous than the birds. And when it's healthy and vibrant, it's this technicolor dance that looks like you know something that only could happen in a film studio. Tom is the executive director of the Bay Foundation and an expert diver. He's been studying kelp forests for over 15 years. He invited me to join his team to go see what's happening under the water. Check, radio check, this is Neoclinus, Terminal Island. We headed up the coast to their first research site, Golden Cove. The conditions were perfect. Ari Reynolds and Heather Burdick are part of the team, Bay Foundation marine biologists who manage the kelp reforestation project. They're diving in to get a look at their progress. So we're starting with what number? 21. It turns out that the kelp is disappearing in large part because of these guys, sea urchins. Back on the boat, I asked Tom to explain. A big part of our work comes down to focusing on the urchins and the kelp. Uh, and that's because they are directly related. The urchins feed on the kelp forest. And that all works out fine when things are in balance, when there's the right amount of kelp and the right amount of urchins. Unfortunately, that's not the case. This is an urchin barren. It's called that because they eat everything in sight, creating a barren seascape. As long as the urchins are here, the kelp can't grow. The kelp is absolutely missing, and all we have is bunches and bunches, thousands, millions of urchins down there that have eaten all the kelp. And any kelp that tries to start again in those areas and grow back gets mowed down before it even gets a chance. In a healthy kelp forest, there are only two urchins per square meter. In a barren, that number can reach 90. That's over 45 times more urchins than there should be to maintain balance in this fragile ecosystem. When we take the predators out of the system by fishing effort or historical hunting of sea otters in this case, we've upset the balance. And what we have is way too many sea urchins and not enough kelp. That might sound like an urchin fisherman's dream. Thousands of urchins ripe for the picking. And in Southern California's $10 million a year urchin industry, why wouldn't you want an abundance of them? Tom says it's not that simple. The sort of nuance of this is that the urchins and the barrens are malnourished. They don't have a lot of energy to give to anything that would choose to eat them. They are weak. They barely hold on to the rocks. And sick urchins don't make good sushi. So how do you get rid of thousands of useless urchins? In the past, we used to pop the urchins off the rocks one at a time, collect them in bags, float them away, carry them out, dump them out into the ocean. In the end, we decided that the best thing to do was to smash them on the ocean floor. That way, the little bit of food that's in them was made available to the fish. Those nutrients stayed in the ocean where they should be. And most importantly, the, the calcium carbonate in their shell is now made available to the ocean at a time where we're concerned about ocean acidification and things like that. During their dives, Tom, Heather, and Ari collected urchin samples from the kelp forest and the barrens so we could take a closer look. After a long morning at sea, we headed back to the lab, where I jumped at the chance to dissect some urchins. I'm going to wear gloves because I'm a wimp, if that's okay no, that's with fine. you. We're used to having Sure, dirty you do this every day, right? <laughs> Okay, so um, this is the mouth of the urchin. Okay. We're actually going to go through the anus. Where's the, the anus? You can't really see it. Oh, right in the middle <laughs> on top. <laughs> now you're going to take your knife. Mm -hmm. You're going to make this look a lot easier than it is. Uh, we'll you? see. All right, you're going to put it in the middle. Straight in the top. Oh, yep. And okay. then give it a little twist. Oh, okay. I think I got it. Perfect. Cool. Cool. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Okay, so the orange parts are the gonads. Yeah, that's what looks like uni. Uni 
A common ingredient in sushi and sashimi is actually the gonads of the sea urchin. In other words, it's testes and ovaries. So usually, I thought, like, like, this would be on top of a bed of rice. This is one of their gonads. Tell me a little bit more about the difference between a healthy urchin that you pull out of a kelp forest and an urchin from an urchin barren. Um, well, the, the main difference is going to be the size of their gonads from the amount of food that they have available mm -hmm. to them. These two urchins produced these gonads. On the left, uni from a healthy kelp forest urchin. On the right, a sick urchin from the barrens. Did I do an okay job? I left a lot good in job. there. I think, I? You, I think you forgot the one in the back. Oh no, there's one back there? Okay. The results of the restoration are clear. This is what an urchin barren looked like before the removal began. In less than four months' time, this was the result. Kelp grows incredibly fast, up to two feet per day. That's great news, not just for the environment, but for the local fishermen as well. Our research showed very clearly that for every unit of urchin barren that we turn into kelp forest, they see about an 883% return to their businesses. So at a time when we have ongoing debate about whether or not it's the environment or the economy, I think this is a really lock case solid demonstration that it's good for both. It's likely that in as little as five or six years time, the kelp forests of the Palos Verdes Peninsula will be restored back to their previous glory. When the planet's dying, the environment has all these issues. You come out here and spend a year with us and you put the ocean back and it's powerful. I'm Cara Santa Maria for SoCal Connected.